Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be talking about Mongoose. So Mongoose is an object document modeling tool that can help you create documents and store them in your collection. So as you saw in the previous tutorials, when we created um, documents and stored them into our user collection, they didn't maintain the same structure. So for example, some of my some of my um, users that I added don't have certain fields filled in because I didn't check for them to be filled in. And then some documents in the collection could have more values or more properties than other ones. And so what Mongoose helps with is creating a structure or schema as they say, uh, creating a schema and then creating documents based off of those schemas so that all of the documents in a collection will have the same structure and it also provides its own methods to easily update, store, save and remove and other, among, and other functions and it provides these functions for you so you don't have to use the MongoDB functions. So to get started, it's actually really easy to use Mongoose. Uh, the first thing we have to do is, so I'll stop this, and the first thing we do is npm install Mongoose. And it should install it quickly. Okay, so it installed it. Let me stop this. Okay, so now in node modules, you'll see that I have Mongoose. So this, this um, code is from the previous tutorial. You can go there and download it, or you can download it in the link below. Uh, this, this code basically has all the routes for editing and deleting users. So here if we click on... Oh, I stopped it. Whoops. So now let me start it up again. Nodemon. Start up the MongoDB. Whoops. Okay, so now if we go to a user, Jane, and we go to edit, we can edit her values here. So, uh, teacher, and she's two years old, update, and it's updated automatically. And then you can also delete this user. I don't have any confirmation or anything when you click that button, so it will actually delete her, and I don't want that right now. So here's a user, so let's go back to the list. So that's the code I'm using. You can edit and delete users. And yeah, okay, so now to get started, we downloaded Mongoose. So the first thing we'll do is we'll require it so we can use it in this file. So we'll do var mongoose equals require and then mongoose. Okay, and then the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to connect. So we're going to do mongoose connect and we're going to connect to this URL. So let's, so what we'll do is we'll actually create a new database. So this database testing has all the information, all of these users, but we want, I want to, I want to have a blank slate and have no users in this database. So all of them can have the same structure and follow this mongoose type um, style of coding. So I'll call it testing mongoose. So that's the database name testing mongoose. Okay. So now we're connecting to this. Um, we're connecting to this database. And we want to, so here we're using the Mongo client connect function. And when we connect to the database, we start the app. So we're going to do something very similar. And we're actually going to do, we're going to create a variable called DB. And we're going to do DB equals mongoose connection. So first thing we do is require mongoose and then we connect it. And then DB is equal to the connection. So now there's a method that mongoose provides DB once and on open. So when the database is set up and opened up, we're able to start our application. So that's very similar to what we did here, Mongo client connect. And when it's connected, we start our application. So we're going to do the same thing and we're going to get rid of this. So we're not going to have to, so as you saw here, we set DB, which isn't this, that DB has nothing to do with this one. They just happen to have the same name, but we set this variable equal to the database so that all throughout this code, we can use this database and we can um, use its met methods. We're not actually gonna have to do that with Mongoose because Mongoose, we create a schema and then we create documents based off of that schema, as you'll see in a second. So here we do db once open. So once the database is open and ready to go, we start our application. So here we connect it to Mongoose and then at the bottom, we wait for it to be ready to, to use. So here, okay, so here we have some requirements and then this stuff is this stuff is for express. So here we'll define the first thing that Mongo provides for us is a schema. So schema is basically just what it sounds like. It's a, it's a schema for how our models 
or how our documents in the collection will look. So the first thing we'll do is we'll do var user schema equals mongoose schema. So the schema we're defining here is called user schema and mongoose has a method called schema and we're going to define the schema here. So a user will have a name that will be a string, an age that will be a number. And so I'll, pro I'll provide a link for this mongoose uh, documentation so you can see all the different properties uh, and values you can provide here. But the schema is basically a high level view of how the structure of a document will look. So each user will have a name which will be a string, an age which will be a number, etc. And there are a lot of different values you can provide here. But for our application here, it's going to be pretty simple. And then hobby is also a string. So here is the schema. So now, all, based off of the schema, we're going to create a model. And a model is actually what the, uh, what the document is based on. So when we create a model, every new instance of a model creates a document that we can store in the collection. So here we'll call, we'll call it, whoops, create model based off schema. So var, go away. So var user, this is the model, mongoose model. And now we provide two things. The first thing is a string, user. And so this user will be the document. And then what Mongoose does is it takes the plural form of this, so users will be the collection. So within this database, testing Mongoose, so you see here in this code we have collection is db collection users, db collection users. Mongoose automatically creates a collection called users for us because we created a model called user. And then the schema for this model will be user schema. So now we have the setup. And we're basically ready to start using the mongoose methods to add users, update users, and remove users, and the other methods we're going to use. So here we required it, we created a schema, we created the model. So to create the model based on the schema, each instance of model is a document in our collection. So just to make it clear, that's what this is. So when we do new user, it's going to create a new document. So you'll see that in a second. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we will add a new user. So here, when we post to um, the slash, so that was in on the index page. So when you post to the um, slash, it'll create a new user. So all of this code here, we created, we got the collection, and then we insert a user. So this is pure MongoDB methods. We're going to use Mongoose now. So it's really easy. So we're going to create so var user equals new user. And now we're going to pass in the parameters. So this model, we're creating a new instance of this model by doing new user. And this model is based off of this schema. So we need to pass in these values. So we'll do name is rec body name age rec body age uh, occupation occupation and then hobby rec body hobby okay so we created a new instance of this model and now to simply put it into the collection all we have to do is user save and then it'll insert into the collection, and we actually have a callback, so function, error, result, and we can do console log, user, inserted. Okay, so we can get rid of all of this code now, and just pass in rest render. So when the user is added, so what we did here is we created a new instance of the model, passed in the variables, rec body, age, occupation, hobby, etc., which comes from here. And then we save it, and then we simply render the page again. So let's see if this works now. So we will go to, so if we re reload this page, we should see nothing because we're in a new database now. So we'll go to the home page. All right, no errors. So we'll create a new user, uh, Bob. Age 25, occupation coder, hobby, eating. 
Now submit. Okay, seems to work. Okay, so user inserted, and here we printed out the user information. So we have this, this variable, name, age, occupation, hobby, and the ID automatically generated by Mongo. So it seems to be working so far. So let's rewrite all the other MongoDB functionality uh, using Mongoose functions. So here we inserted a user using the save method. Here, let's get all the users. So, the, so find is very similar in Mongoose. So what we do is, here we were, we we're using the find method on a collection. So in Mongoose, we can actually use the find method on this model because this model is tied to the collection because the collection is actually called users and the model is user. So what we can do is user find all and then we pass a callback. So here's where the query goes, but we want to find all the users. So we simply just find all and then we get error and then result. So now we can pass, so the result will be an array of all users and we can do the same thing that we are doing here. Results render list and then users is the result. And we can get rid of this whole thing here. Okay. Now if we go to list, we should see one user, Bob. Okay, let's add another user, Jane, age, and four, occupation, teacher, hobby, code. Submit, list, and we have two users. So far so good, everything's working with Mongoose. And you can see that the code is really simple and easy to read as well. It's not just that it's new functionality and we're using a new library or a new module, it's actually really easy to read. You can see user here is a model, it's using the schema, and then we're using the, um, the methods are very easy to understand. So find, we create a new user and we save. Okay, so let's get, so here we need to get the information for a user. So we're going to do find, we're going to do the same thing. Except we're going to use, uh, we're going to pass in a query now. So we're going to do user, find, and now the, per the query is going to be Oops. So where the name is the request parameter name. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to find the user where the name is equal to request parameter parent's name. And then we're going to pass a callback. So when we find this user, console log. Result. So let's test this out. Okay, let's clear this. And now we'll try and click on the user, Bob. And it found his information, found Bob. And now if we try and find the user that doesn't exist, so user John, we got an empty array. So you can see it's working the same way as it did with Mongo. So we can actually do if result.link is greater than zero, then you know the user exists. And we will pass in user, the name will be result.name and the rest will be the rest of the info will be results and then otherwise send user does not exist okay now we can get rid of this all this code we had and here it is so user find based on this parameter if something exists pass it in so now let's see if this works user does not exist Bob and we get all the information oh, whoops Okay, so we actually didn't modify this page yet, which we will in a second. So username, actually, info result. Ah, okay, so result returns an array of the um, users it found. So we actually need to pass in result zero name, result zero. Now if we reload it, Bob, okay. So we got the information for Bob. So 25 years old, coder, Jane, okay. So everything seems to be working so far. Now let's work our way down and we have a few more routes. So collection, so what's this? This is when you're editing. So the editing is very similar to this. 
it's actually the same thing except the page changes. Okay, and so now if we click on Jane, edit, okay, we have all information, and now we just need to modify those post routes right here. So two more. So when we change the uh, information for a user, we're going to call the update function. So we're going to do user update. So user update. So what user do we want to update? We want to update where name equals request body dot name. So this functionality works as it did in the previous tutorials. We're just rewriting the code so I don't actually have to test if it's getting this information, for example. So name, request body name, and then we're going to update it with so age will be the request body age, etc. And then when that's done, we can return a uh, error result user edited. And then we redirect to that user's page. So now we can get rid of, where does this go? We can get rid of all of this now. Now this looks much better. And let's test it out. So age 100, update 100 years old, user edited. Okay, awesome. And then finally, the last thing we need to modify with Mongoose is the delete function. And here we'll do user remove. And it's very similar. Remove where name is request body name. And then we can pass in error result. And then, okay. So let's try it out now. List Bob. We'll go to the edit page and we'll click delete and then it's gone. Okay, awesome. So you can see here we rewrote everything that we had in MongoDB. We rewrote it in Mongoose. The code is much easier to understand, but the real benefit of Mongoose is that all of the documents follow a specific schema. All the documents in this collection and there are a lot of things that Mongoose takes care of for us. So for example, creating the collection, cre actually creating the document. So here we specify a new user and then we just call save. So that's what Mongoose has a lot of other great functionality. So you can also attach methods to schemas. And then you can call them like you would a normal JavaScript object. Uh, yeah, so I'll post a few links for Mongoose documentation that can be really helpful when you're developing applications.